welcome to this new issue of Angles. I'm Cécile Dudouy. I'm Jacob Maillet. We are the two guest editors of this issue on the enemy image. The, the concept of the enemy image was developed at the end of the Cold War by a psychologist working on international relations, such as Ralph K. White and Jerome D. Frank. Uh, what's very interesting about this concept is that it links uh, discourse analysis and image analysis to psychological mechanisms that are common to uh, all humans and human societies. And even though the concept uh, was inherited from the Cold War, it remains incredibly relevant uh, today given the fact that we are constantly bombarded with enemy images on a, on a daily basis. This collection of articles is not meant as an exhaustive catalogue of enemy images. What it does instead is offer insights into the articulation between authoring as an anthropological process and the enemy image as its weaponized product, as well as its political, strategic uses. Enemy images come out of an in-group, out-group dynamic in uh, human societies. Stereotypes develop when there is a strong rejection of a specific other by a given community. In time, such stereotypes coalesce into enemy images, that is, caricatures, images to be hated. This is where the image often becomes distinct from the enemy itself because its characteristics become far removed from reality. Because the mechanisms at work, psychological and political, are the same every time, enemy images are somewhat similar. The enemy is always barbaric, animalistic, primitive, aggressive. It must be legitimate to hate him, kill him, or even, in the nuclear age, annihilate him. From out of the west came another partner to make a silly axis of himself. I, a Japanese, a sap man, sneaking on with a do. Just a Japanese, a sap man, I'm a little crazy too. Now, from a literary perspective, since part of the thrill of fiction is to live the experience of other people, things are usually less clear cut there can be a glamour or a dark attraction to the enemy. There are tropes to the creation of enemy images, a spectrum from ridiculing a debased enemy, as in the Donald Duck clip, or to building up the enemy as a fearsome and deadly figure, as in uh, the Rocky clip. One pattern that emerges from the collection of articles presented here is that the enemy is often male, Male enemies are either ridiculed as not manly enough or presented as a bugbear of hyper-masculinity. A recurring theme is that of the male enemy ravishing a more or less naked and defenseless female figure. Another trope is the dehumanizing of the enemy and presenting him or it as non-human, usually a pest or vermin. The articles collected here fall into two categories the ones that explore the building of the enemy figure and those which subvert that figure. Typical enemy images have often been linked to religion and nationalism. Uh, the articles we've uh, had uh, reflect this. For instance, Isabel Fernandez's article about the enemy image of the Catholic in John Fox's writing. We also have the civilization angle in Martin Burney's article about the stereotypes of Indians in Hollywood movies, or even in Maxime Dafour's article about the alt-right memes today. And finally, of course, we had the nationalistic angle with the French enemy in Hervé Compound's article in 1793 and 2003. The other articles explore the subversion of the enemy image. Christine Schick in Crossing Enemy Lines in That's Just a Kiss, representing Muslims and new ethnicities in the shadow of 9-11, holds the mirror to the spectators. You think of the Muslim them as religious fanatics, but what about us? 
Anne-Lise Maralamle in Mad, Bad and Dangerous to Know, Hoodies in Contemporary British Horror Cinema, shows the hidden pointing hand behind the spectacular image of the enemy. As always, when there is a representation or an act of communication, there are many parties involved. There is a producer of the message and a receiver, a target for this message. The real enemy might be the ones who excommunicate the other. The other two articles are about non-fiction. Olivier Maillot, The Enemy Within, The Long Civil Rights Movement and The Enemy Pictures shows that behind every enemy image there is a narrative. There are vilified bad guys, them, and implicit good guys, us. The articles show how narratives clash and that you can deconstruct enemy images through the creation of another enemy image, here the racist white trash opposed to the violent black nationalist, but that there are other ways in which enemy images can be deconstructed through images of solidarity and kindness to children. Thomas Williams Meeting the Enemy, British-German Encounters in the Occupied Rhineland after the First World War shows the dissolution of enemy images when one comes face to face with that enemy, forcing the narrative behind the enemy image to evolve. The modern era has accelerated the political time as technological developments have made communication faster and easier. Politicians have been quick to see the opportunity to consolidate their power and legitimacy by demonizing enemies, both within and without their own societies. We want to believe that the worst excesses are already in our past, but as Jérôme Viala Godefroy's article on US presidential discourse shows, even democracies are not immune to the politics of fear. The media's taste for sensationalism further amplifies the phenomenon creating the impression that the world is a violent and dangerous place. Images of enemies have multiplied. With the internet, anyone can now spread fear and hatred to advance their own cause. Movements based on hatred themselves generate further hatred and distrust, fueling political polarization and activism. Eventually, both sides of any argument become virtually indistinguishable and rational discourse and compromise prove almost impossible. In the end, the only way to break the cycle is to expose the enemy images for what they are, fictions born from prejudice and fear. <laughs>